time for... Here we go, here we go, here we go. Kickoff. Wait, Dad. With Boomer Esiason and Mike Valenti. Presented nationally by Casamigos Tequila. Casamigos brought to you by those who drink it. And Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. Week 16 in the National Football League. How did we get here? But this is a no-nonsense episode. Boomer's got vacation to take. Booms, how are you, buddy? You know, I'm doing great, Mike. Merry Christmas to you and to all of our listeners out there this weekend. It's a great weekend of football, of course, and I have to work on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I am not complaining. It is a privilege Uh to cover the NFL. It's a privilege to work for CBS. But it does get in the way of a few personal things. But at the end of the day, we all love football, don't we? We do. Um, You know what I want to do? We're going to throw the Thursday night game right into the rundown. No wasted motion. Scones, hit it. The NFL Rundown. All right. Brief note on Thursday night. I wanted your take, Boomer. Dennis Allen, notably conservative, went wild, man. A couple of fourth downs that had everybody in a furor last night. What'd you make of that before I ask you a question about the NFC South? You know, I think he was worried about playing against Matthew Stafford. You know, I think he was a smart coach last night and put it all out there for his team to try and go and win it. The problem is he's got Derek Carr. He doesn't have Matthew Stafford. You know, Mike, I always tell you, when you go into a game as a coach, you got to realize who you're playing, how are they playing when you're playing them, and are they totally healthy all across the board? And quite frankly, the last seven weeks, I could tell you the hottest quarterback in the league has been Matthew Stafford. And I think that Dennis Allen went went into the game thinking that. I've been saying it here in Detroit. I go, you guys think you want a piece of the Rams and a piece of Stafford because, you you know, you want to send him home. I go, I'll tell you right now, you don't want a piece of him. Not the way they're playing. They're frisky. I like them. Yeah, so I'm not going to kill – Dennis Allen. I mean, no, no. Look, they made a bad decision with Derek Carr, but Derek Carr was the one guy out there that they needed a guy, and they gave him a lot of money. And Derek's a nice player. Don't get me wrong, but he is not Matthew Stafford. That's the way no. I look at it. So, who wins the South? I think nobody wants this thing. Well, you know, I think t- I t- I'll tell you, wants it. Baker Mayfield wants it, and Baker oh, Mayfield boy. has bet on himself, and he has played great on the road. Hasn't played so good in Tampa, but has played great on the road. I thought the Saints were going to win the South. Uh, Maybe they still do somehow. That would be a miracle. But the way that Baker Mayfield has been playing as of late, and especially on the road, I think it's it's theirs. There, it's their south for the take, and is is for the Bucks. All right, the Bills are back? Question mark. Like I think so. I I know this Joe Brady thing has helped their performance against Dallas. Physical, just hammers and nails, man. And look at this. We've turned Josh Allen, taken some of the weight off of him. Boomer, they might be back. They're doing things we didn't think they could do. Well, they they are back, and he's back for sure, and they have run the ball a lot more. And now they go on the road, and they go to play the Chargers. Nice weather, and guess what? No Justin Herbert. It's who you play and when you play them. And uh, yeah. right now they are catching the Chargers at the right time. Coach is fired. Um, this is a perfect setup for the Bills to finish this season strong, get into the playoffs, and then be one of those teams that you do not want to play because of the way that Josh Allen has been playing over the last four or five weeks. He looks like the Josh Allen that we saw in week two, three, and four before they went to London. Yeah, and I, I, I love running the ball. You can't overstate it. James Cook, you've always wondered why do they not give him the ball more. Physical, you know, just seeks the contact. Impressive as hell, but on the other side of it, um, uh, you guide it. You, I need you to guide me. Do I need to change my view of the Cowboys? Like I was ready to have them as the two in the NFC. And he just got obliterated. I don't want to change, but I need to know if I need to. Uh, they're not going to be the number two in the NFC. And uh, I do think that Philadelphia, based on their schedule, they got to play Arizona and the Giants right. twice here in the last three weeks. And I told you last week that Dallas could enjoy being number two and have the lead in the NFC East, and they can still feel that way because Philadelphia goes out and lays an egg and loses to uh, Seattle late in the game. But I I just still think that Philadelphia is going to end up with the NFC East lead, and they should be the number two seed going into the playoffs. And I would think that Philadelphia will get their their game right this week against the Giants. We'll talk about that when we get ready to pick them. 
But uh, Philadelphia has really struggled here offensively. But I think going to Matt Patricia, honestly, as a defensive coordinator, I know you can make fun of him out there as a head coach in Detroit. We can make fun of him as an offense coordinator <laughs> last year in New England. But the guy knows defense. And I thought that their defense played a lot better in Seattle than they had the previous three weeks. Yeah, and, and again, all right, Eagles will be the two seed. I, for, for me, I'd like to know where you're at. I mean, San Francisco far and away number one best team. But the second best team, forget seeding. If I put them on a field tomorrow and we play again, are you taking Philly over Dallas? I would. Well, it depends on where the game is played. Let's say game, it's in Philly. If, if it's in Philly, I'm definitely taking Philly. And if it's played in Dallas, uh-huh. then I'm definitely taking Dallas. Dallas is a completely different team at home. Um, yeah. And that's why this. That's why the game in Miami this week is so important for Dallas. So the Eagles, right? You just brought it up. All right, let's give them some credit with the Patricia thing. I'll tell you it's never a great idea switching a defensive coordinator this late in the year. But, I mean, what do they do well exactly right now? You know what I mean? Offensively, they're all over the place. Defensively, we know their weaknesses. You got beat by Drew Locke. And part of that reason is you only scored 17 points. Where are you at confidence level with the Eagles that they're going to make a meaningful run in these playoffs? Well, I do know that Jalen Hurts was playing with the flu last week, so he wasn't 100%. I do know that, and I'm sure he'll be 100% against the Giants. I worry about their defense, but then again, I go all the way back to week one when you and I were discussing these teams, and I told you that there was going to be growing pains with the Eagles simply because they lost both of their coordinators and I think that's really come back to haunt them. And I wish I wish Jalen Hurts would play the position of quarterback the way that Brock Purdy plays it, as opposed to the way that you know Patrick Mahomes plays it. Patrick Mahomes is on a different planet than everybody else, and he sure. can get away with certain things. And he does not nearly have the players on the field with him that Jalen Hurts has. And I'm sure that Nick Sirianni is just banging his head against his against the wall in his office when nobody can see him because Jalen is missing a lot of open guys. And you could tell by the frustration of wide receivers when they're running their routes and the ball is not on them like it was for the Rams on Thursday night. Like the receivers of the Rams know the ball is coming. And that's why, you know, they're all in sync with one another. Jalen, for whatever reason, is not seeing the opposing defenses and defenses are playing him differently. And I think he is really struggling mightily and it's frustrating to watch. Even though his numbers are decent, they're not as good as they should be. No, no, and the turnovers are a big part of it, too. I mean, that that's, you know, if you're sloppy, it's one thing. The the, the turnovers are, have been egregious this year. You can't win that way. Mike, they, not, got, they, not, got, they got the best offensive line. They have a running yep. game with DeAndre Swift. They have three wide receivers that are off the charts. That's, they have a tight end that is definitely, uh, you know, I would say a top 10 tight end in the league. There's no reason other than the quarterback not seeing it and not playing the way he's supposed to be playing. Are they struggling? Now, they're 10-4. and four. I mean, they're a good team, but if Jalen can get hot here the last three weeks against uh, you know lesser opponents, then maybe he goes into the playoffs with a level of confidence that we haven't seen from him this year, and maybe he you know all of a sudden finds that magic and they go on a magical run to the Super Bowl. All right, Ravens business trip, get it done, mission accomplished. We'll save a lot of the Ravens conversation for best of the best. They're in that game. But the Jags, I, I was, and I understand Lawrence, the injury, mm-hmm. you know, Cam Robinson, the injury, but, but Boomer, all year, you and I have been searching, hey, are they going to get this right? I think they got it right, blown out. Hey, they might be right again. Bad loss. I, are they going to lose the, are they going to lose the division? I, I don't, you know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting di- dynamic because they have to play the Bucks this week. And we were just talking about. I think they're going to lose that game, by the way. Yeah, so if they lose that game, now all of a sudden the Texans game takes even on more importance. And I don't know what the Texans are doing with C.J. Stroud just yet. We're not sure yet as we're talking today. Um, But, yeah, I would say that sooner or later, you know, I think Trevor Lawrence has shown the ability to be the leader. He's played hurt. Um, He's played tough. I I think he's a tough kid. Um, But sooner or later, they're going to have to win one of these games. And this is like the type of game that he has to go out there and win. I think they're a better team than the Bucs. Um, I, su- I would suspect that he will have a much better game this week because he'll have a full week of practice. He won't look like he's out of sync. And uh, this will be interesting because you and I have placed him on a pedestal. I think along with everybody else, just simply because he was the number one overall pick and everybody expected so much out of him. And right now I would tell you that he is not as good as we have expected him to be at this point. Some of it's injury, but some of it – is him like he's got to take over and he's got to be the leader 
that they expect him to be. So hopefully this will be a game where he shows he's a dynamic player and they will beat the Bucs. Yeah, and you know, part, Boomer, part of it, we've always had this talk. That, that, that offensive line, it's the Achilles heel of the entire team. They got talent at every level. But that old line, with or without Cam Robinson, it's not good enough. But, I mean, I, again, I'm not taking the weight off of him. I'm not an apologist for Trevor Lawrence. But part of the – I mean, you know what you know, it reminds me of? Here, I'll, I'll skip ahead. So, we have these conversations in Detroit all the time. And a lot of Lions fans, believe it or not, they don't like Jared Goff. They don't want him here. And I go, guys, be careful what you wish for. The guy over a 30-game sample size has been, by numbers, second-best quarterback in the NFC. I bring this up for a reason. Here's the stat to end all stats. Last Saturday, the Lions destroyed the Broncos. That was only the fifth game they had their starting offensive line together, right? All five projected starters. Here's what they look like, and by way, Goff looks like, when the line is together. They're 5-0 and this year. They score almost 40 points a game. They run for 180, 425 a game in total offense, and Jared Goff, 121 QB ranking. I only bring it up because when Goff doesn't have his O-line, totally different player. You, it, It's not reinventing the wheel to suggest if a QB's line is terrible, oh, and by the way, he's hampered by a high ankle sprain, you might not get the best results. Yeah, it's the same thing with Trevor Lawrence. I mean, all quarterbacks go through it. Some quarterbacks were able to overcome it, and like Joe Burrow did, and he took maybe one of the worst collection of offensive linemen due yeah. to injuries and everything else to a Super Bowl. That's how great Joe Burrow was that year. But right, Mahomes the year prior, remember yeah, when yeah. they went and played Tampa. Yeah, you have to overcome in some of these things. There's there's no question about it. And you know what would be interesting is if there is a first-round matchup between the Rams and the Lions in Detroit, that would be awesome. I would love to see oh, Matthew Stafford on the same field against uh, you know against Stafford, I mean against Goff, who's going against his former team. That would be amazing. That would be an amazing first-round matchup. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. But – the Lions played their best game of the season last week. I don't care. They kicked the living yep. crap out of the uh, the Broncos. Now, can they do it on the road when they play against the Viking team with their fourth quarter? Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, we'll get trouble to trouble spot. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is this is this a Greg Giannotti trouble spot? Yes. We'll, we'll get to it in the picks. <laughs> um, I, I put this the end two ways. Me as a fan watching, you can either tell me I'm right or I'm out of my mind. Jets with Salah, Steelers with Tomlin. It just felt different. It felt like, you know what, these two guys might be done. Well, I think Salah's got Aaron Rodgers in his corner. And as long as Aaron Rodgers is committed to the Jets over the next two years, which he has said he is over the last two weeks, and he's not going to play this year, we all know that, uh, then I think Robert Salah is safe. I think Joe Douglas is safe. I think they're safe. As far as Tomlin is concerned, the Rooney family is not known to listen to anybody. They go, uh, they beat to their own drum. Yeah. They don't get forced by anything. They have a legacy franchise. They know that. Uh, I think it's how they finish this year. I know it's a bad look with Deontay Johnson and George Pickens. It's a really bad look. And it looks like the, the you know the the players are running the team and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's about as ugly as it gets in that regard. But if somehow, some way, they wait, make their way into the playoffs, which they still have a very good chance of doing, uh, then I don't think we're talking about Mike Tomlin leaving Pittsburgh. Okay, Colts. Explain this one because nobody talks about them, but here they are at eight and six. The problem is they're not good at anything. I mean, metrically speaking, but yet they win games. I mean, how are they doing this? I think their defense is a big part of it, and Gardner Minshew is kind of fun. You know, I think he's a guy that we all enjoy watching. Uh, there are games where he could throw three interceptions. He reminds me like a throwback guy, like he's a Ken Stabler type of guy. <laughs> you know, he's all over oh, the that's place. Going way back. Yeah, but I love it. I love the way he plays, you know, and, and I think uh, he's the perfect insurance policy for the Colts. They do run the ball effectively, by the way. They also do have it when, when healthy. They do, do have, one, they have one of the better offensive lines, and their defensive line is playing great. And uh, Zaire Franklin is one of the be better tacklers in the league. So I well, he's I, the reason they got rid of Shaq Leonard. That's along exactly with the right. Contract right. So their defense and, and Gardner Minshew, I can't take an, I can't give him enough credit. You know, in terms of backup quarterbacks this year, you know, he's like one of the top three overall backup quarterbacks. If there was an award for a backup quarterback who have saved the season, he would be in the running for that award right now. All right, question. I'm, I'm doing this for me, for Scones, for Giants fans everywhere. I just need you to tell me with what you feel today, knowing what you know, 
talking to who you talk to, whatever it may be, if the Giants end up with a top five pick, which they're on the fringe of right now, will they select a quarterback and make my Christmas dreams come true? I say yes. Um, Thank you. And I say yes. And I say they may even make a trade to get up to a guy that they really want. Um, but if they if they fall out of it, look, I don't think they're going to win any one of their last three games here. I don't. Good. Uh, I Good. don't. I, I think that uh, they got a you know tough finishing schedule here. Tommy DeVito is a nice story. Um, I'm not crazy about all the nuts stuff going on all around the field with him and what what like family friends and everybody else is doing to this yeah. kid. Rest uh, in peace to your 15 minutes of fame, Cutlass. That that's you, what you. it feels like. And your party city agent. Goodbye now. Bye. <laughs> that's how. That's how, that's exactly how it feels. That's it. We will get to a lot more. A lot to do with the picks. Don't make a move. And it is the giving of the gifts later. Right now, I want to tell you about Casamigos, the smoothest tequila on the planet. Enjoy the entire family of Casamigos tequilas: the Reposado, Añejo, Blanco, Cristalino, or the Mezcal. It's Casamigos tequila. Brought to you by those who drink it, and Casamigos Tequila reminds you to please celebrate responsibly. It's kickoff with Boomer and Valenti. All right, we got it. We got a full potato this week. No bye weeks. It's just football a palooza for the holiday, and with it, hit the music. Picks of the week. Let's dive right in. The Boomer Memorial right here. The Red Hot Bengals. Laying two and a half, traveling to the Steelers. Mr. Esiason. All right, four weeks ago, the Steelers went into Cincinnati and beat them, and that was Jake Browning's first start. He had trouble with a 3-4 defense. The pass protections were driving him crazy. I saw him say this himself in a couple of these post-game press conferences. They will they will be so much better this time around playing them. This is a revenge game for the Bengals. These games are always tight. They're always low scoring. I'm going to take the Bengals and the two and a half points. Yeah, under a field goal. And I know it's Tomlin at home, divisional dog. I don't know that that applies with the current state of the Steelers. I'm going Cincinnati. Bills, 12.5 point favorites in L.A. against the Chargers. Absolutely catching the Chargers at the right time. You know, interim head coach. All sorts of issues. No Justin Herbert. The Bills are flying high. Josh Allen is playing his ass off. You talked about it in the previous segment. The way that they're using James Cook finally is really paying dividends. I love the Bills here. I think they blow out the Chargers. Yeah, and also, the the more physical you play, the easier it is for a team to lay down and quit. And I'm telling you, Chargers are on quit alert after what we saw. Bills, absolutely. Seahawks. Laying two and a half at the Titans, stinky cheese right here. The stinky, stinky cheese, I, I don't like this at all. I don't like what the Titans <laughs> did last week. They wore the old oil jerseys against the Houston Texans, and the Texans went in there and beat them. Uh, the Seahawks, I'm not sure who they're playing at quarterback right now. Uh, I don't think Geno Smith is ready to go. I just feel like the Titans, I don't know, they're going to be a pain in the ass. I you have the veto right there. I, that's right I, I'm there. gonna. I, you know, this is a game I would veto. I and I am going to veto. I don't like it, and I I think it just stinks. If you picked it, who would it be? I would take the Titans, depending on the quarterback for the Seahawks. If Geno Smith played, I would take the Seahawks. Yeah. If he's not playing, then I'm taking the Titans. I don't think Drew Locke well, on the road at Titans is not gonna is not gonna work. No. Now, and I and I, I share your I'm, – I'm going veto here as well, Scones. I, I can't touch this game with a 10-foot pole. Atlanta laying two and a half, hosting the Colts. Arthur Smith might be coaching for his job. Well, that's right. You know, we talk about surprise firings and surprise situations around the league. There always is one or two of those. This could be one of them. Uh, they are going back to Taylor Heineke right now because of what Desmond Ritter did late in that game last week that cost the Falcons the game. So unbelievable! Right, I'm taking decision. I'm taking the Colts right here. I'm taking Gardner Minshew. I'm taking this Colt defense, and uh, I think they win at least by three points. I'm going to take the Colts. I'm not comfortable with it. I hate the idea. Atlanta's desperate, embarrassed after last week, but they're just bad. Period. In the quarterback position, bad. Uh, Browns. Favored by two and a half, traveling to Houston. Again, not sure about C.J. Stroud right here or Case Keenum. Case Keenum led them to victory last week. A uh, a nice comeback for them at the, on the road within their division. Browns are a different story, man. The Browns are a great defense. They will get all over 
uh, the Houston Texans, who basically uh, you know are missing these wide receivers again. I, I yeah. don't know how they won the game last week. They did give them credit, but I think this is a completely different set of circumstances. I do like the Browns here, as long as Joe Flacco is not throwing five interceptions in this game. No, no, but that Browns defense, I, I'm going to continue to say it, and I know I'll end up falling for the trap when they're in the playoffs and I take them plus points, but I, I, I love it. I'm going to take the Browns. Pack laying five against the Panthers. Now, I know you watch me every Sunday on the NFL today. Last week, my upset pick of the week was the Panthers. That's you know, right. We were, were about, both on it. But there were about 100 people there. I mean, I, the way we do it on the NFL today, you got to win. You don't get points and all that other stuff. So ah. I picked them to win straight up. And they beat Atlanta in the rain and about 100 people there. So um, I think we're going to get our same situation here where there's not going to be a lot of people there, which is good for Bryce Young and uh, that Panther offense. But I will take the Packers here. I think that they'll cover the number here, and I can see them winning by about 10 points. Look, I, I, I just keep saying it, Boomer. I hate this Packer defense. This Joe Barry and this defense and all the high draft picks. Tell me the next time they get a big stop. There's something that number's fishy. I, I'll just take the points. I don't know. I might be out of my mind. I, 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 I got to take the Panthers again. I'm going to go back to back on these guys. I'm nuts. Now, I heard your show in New York. Quote, I have to be right on the Jets at least once. Jets laying three, hosting the Commanders. <laughs> it's why? I don't know why. I, I Normally, I wouldn't bet the game, but you know because we have to pick it here in New York, I'll pick it again here on our show on Saturday. So I will take... Uh, the New York Jets, I'll lay the three points. Uh, I'm just going by the Jet defense. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, you know, Trevor Simeon's going to play. This is, a, this is a, uh, a commander defense that doesn't really have a great pass rush. I, I got to believe whoever is playing quarterback for the Jets is going to be able to muster up a victory here. So I'm going to take the Jets and I'll lay the three. I got to preserve my other veto because there's a game later I, I don't want any part of. Boy, do I wish I had another one to use here. All right, I'll tell you what. You talked me into it. Because I think the other line you said when I was listening was, the commanders, what are they doing? Yes. I don't know what either of these teams is doing. I'll take the Jets and lay the three. So I know what the Jets are doing. They're waiting for Aaron Rodgers to come back next year. And to his credit, he has busted his ass with the rehab. It's not going to happen for him this year, which I never thought it was going to be in the first place. But he actually has set the example. And I do believe in his heart, and believe it or not, there is a heart in there. I do believe in his heart. He feels like he owes the Jets at least two more years of top-quality quarterback play, and hopefully he can give it to them. All right, trap game of the week right here. Yep. Lions laying three points, traveling to Minnesota. I'm taking the Vikings here, and I'm taking the Vikings because of their defense and Brian Flores. You know, the, Hey, listen, the Lions have been – a good team. Um, I know that they're healthy offensive line-wise. Um, I'm not so sure about Nick Mullins and what he can do with this offense. But it just seems like the Vikings play better at home. Uh, their defense is good. Brian Flores should get uh, nominations for off uh, defensive coach of the year, defensive coordinator of the year. And uh, I, I'm going to take the Vikings and the points. Yeah, it's the Lions you know, off a huge win. It's the Vikings who blew that game in Cincinnati. And Flores' defense – Outer space, giving up 21 points late. Mullins, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Boomer, if people watch the games, Mullins is actually really good for them until he's not. And he does something insane. <laughs> Even one of his touchdown passes was insane. How about the interception I, of B.J. Hill? Uh, oh, dear, dear God. I'm like, <laughs> what, what, what was, was your hope there? He was like, I'm like, at best, you were going to complete a pass to that guy's ass crack. You can't, it's not possible. <laughs> Nick, you, you got to fall down. The play's over, buddy. I'm going to take the Vikings, though. I, it's, it's all on the line for them in Minnesota. I got to take the Vikings with the points. Bucks laying two against the Jags. Boy, doesn't this suggest there's there's a problem here with Trevor Lawrence? Yes, it does. And that's why I'm going with the Jaguars. And I think that Trevor knows it. Trevor feels it. I'm sure that uh, – and, again, I always fall back to the coach here. And I do love – I, I love uh, Doug Peterson as a coach. I actually like Todd Bowles, too, and I think he keeps his team in it. And, you know, Todd Bowles uh, told a, a very funny story to one of the guys that I work with on the NFL today about Baker Mayfield – he said, what's it like coaching Baker Mayfield? And Todd Ball said, you know what? If I asked him to put his face into a moving fan, he would do that for me. So that's how much belief they have in Baker Mayfield down there in Tampa. And I love that. 
uh, that story. But I, I'm going to take the Jaguars here and Trevor Lawrence. I'm taking the Bucks. The line looks too strange to me. And this is what we do. We bet the strange. I'm going to go Bucks. Bears, Cardinals. Now, for Giants fans, just FYI, you need the Bears to win this game like oxygen. Bears laying four and a half to the cards. And the Bears will win this game. This game is in Chicago. Um, so I'm assuming it's going to be a cold weather game. And look, you're talking about Kyler Murray, little hands, little feet. <laughs> and it's going to be cold. And I don't think that he likes playing in cold weather. And I'm just going to go by the old standby that a warm weather team or a dome team playing out yeah. outside late in December um, I'm going to go with the the home team, the Chicago Bears, and Justin Fields, who is trying to prove to the Bears that he wants, you know, he wants that job next year. <clears throat> I agree. listen. I agree with you. The Bears are going to win. Just show me twenty to seventeen. I'll take the four and a half. I, I just don't like the Bears laying. This is a real power number now, too, guys. Four and a half is powerful because now you get all the zany two point conversions and stuff like that. Four and a half is the new three and a half. I'm going to take the cards with the points. Dolphins, a one-point favorite over Dallas. Okay. Fraud mm -hmm. ball. Somebody called this a fraud ball. I did not name it the fraud ball. I just heard somebody else talking about it. So all week long in New York, we were talking about, okay, which one of these teams is for real? One team can't beat a team, you know, with a winning record, and the other team can't win on the road. Um, I like the Dolphins here. I think Tyreek Hill is going to play. Uh, I think the Cowboys bring out the best in everybody when they visit them, just like we saw from the Buffalo Bills last week. And I think the Miami Dolphins are going to put a hurting on the Cowboys again, and it's going to be another long week for Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott once this game's over with. Uh, it's This is so difficult. But the fact that they were installed as favorites, the problem, though, Boomer, seriously, the Cowboys got embarrassed last week. We love taking teams that got embarrassed the week before. But you're right. Away from home, something, it's in the water. Dallas's splits are unbelievable. The difference. I got I got I gotta go with the Dolphins. Did you I can't see believe I'm doing this? Did you see Mike McDaniel after they lost the Tennessee Titan game uh on hard knocks in season? Did you see him uh talking no, to I didn't. his team? It was amazing. No, talk to me. It was amazing. What do you got? Like all the mistakes that were made against the Titans and how he took ownership of the way he should have called plays, but we all lost this as a team. I mean, it was a really it was it was it was like head coaching one on one. This is how you talk to your team. This is how you deal with what just happened against the Titans. And then you come out and you kick the ass of the team that you're playing next. And that's exactly what he did. I love this coach, man. I do. I love the way that he carries himself, the way he talks to his team. I can't get enough of it. Is Tyreek playing? I think he is. All right, I'm in. Dolphins. Broncos, seven point favorites over to Patriots. Well, you know, I, think, I hate this. I hate it too. Uh, but I think the Patriot defense has played great. But here you go. We're late in the season now. Uh, I believe this game is in Denver, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm going to take Denver, and this is uh, this is um, man. I'm going to take the Denver Broncos here. I think they're going to lay the wood to the Patriots. Yeah, and again, by the way, last week the reason the Patriots didn't cover that game against the Chiefs. A Bailey Zappy Nick Mullins edition interception. I have no understanding what he was doing. I'm serious. I mean, Boomer, you know the play I'm talking about. Yes. He's rolling out to the right. <laughs> he wasn't trying to throw it away. He actually thought, you know what? I'm going to be able to fit this ball between six people. I, it was insanity. And it gave the Chiefs that short field touchdown. You know, you get nine. Chiefs win by ten. That's the game. But the Pats defense plays really well they're, they're in this it's just offensively woof yeah woof i'll take denver right. all right i'll just take denver because i have to all right this was the game i'm going to use a veto chiefs raiders chiefs lay in 10 no way no way you hate it i'm going to take the raiders here i'm going to take the points uh i think the raiders actually have played better let's face it um i know that it's on the you know what actually forget it i'm vetoing this one too I, I just I got him. You know why? I got him, Scones. You know why? Because we don't have a Ram game to really I was just go gonna over. Say, this is it right and here. And it's not the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Nervous Breakdown. <laughs> by the way, I, I think, you know, if I had to bet it, I would take the Raiders, but I'm not going to. Okay, fair. Uh, no, I'm with you. I would, but, man, I, I can't get there. I can't get there with Aiden O'Connell. But the Chiefs have no business. I'm not being disrespectful. They have no business with that offense laying 10 points 
to anyone in this league, maybe not named Carolina. You know what this game is going to be, Mike? You know what this game is going to be? It's going to be the Kadarius Tony breakout game. What do you want to put on that? (laughs) (laughs) Breakout game. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, I tell you what, I got a gift for him later in our next segment with Boom Pot. Don't worry. Eagles laying 13 and a half to the Giants. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to take the Eagles here. I'll lay the big number. And the reason I'm taking them is because of these, the way that they've played over the last couple of weeks, how disappointing they were last week and how they lost to uh, Seattle. I think Jalen Hurts will put on a show here. And I look, they always get the best of the Giants. So I'll take the Eagles and lay the points. Yeah, I, I will too. And I have to tell you, I've reached spite store phase. If you're a Curb fan, Latte Larry. I'm now spiteful of all this Tommy Cutlets and Stilato nonsense. We got arguments with pizzerias. And, and uh, you know what? Goodbye, everybody. Wave goodbye. Eagles lay the 13 and a half. Boomer, tell them about Casamigos. All right, best of the best right around the corner. Okay, so what goes great with football? It's Casamigos tequila. Casamigos brought to you by those who drink it and love it, by the way. Make sure you have plenty on hand for the week. 16 games, whether it be Añejo, Blanco, Reposado, Cristalino, or Mezcal, it's Casamigos Tequila. And they remind our friends to please celebrate responsibly. It's kickoff with Boomer and Valenti. All right, loaded last segment for you. We're going to get the best of the best. We've also got the giving of the gifts as the final word. I can't wait for this football game. That's all I'm telling you. This football game is right now. It's a push with Christmas Day, actually. Um, Let's go best of the best. This week's best of the best. This game's got it all, Boomer. Physicality. We got a disrespect card being played. Might be the top two teams in football. It is the San Francisco 49ers. Five-point favorites hosting the Baltimore Ravens. So let's just start. Make a case for the Ravens because I can't. I can't. I just I feel like the Niners are a monolith. Well, Make they, the case. All right. The case for the Ravens is the way that Lamar Jackson has played the last few weeks. Now he's gotten his wide receivers more involved. Uh, They do not miss Mark Andrews as Isaiah Likely has really picked up the slack at the tight end position. Uh, Lamar is doing what Lamar did his his basically every year he's been a a player, but his MVP season like he's he's the dual threat quarterback that drives defenses crazy. The thing about the 49ers and their defense is that they have speed and they have speed on the defensive side of the football that can come at you from the edge. They can come at you from linebacker and they can come at you from safety. So there's enough speed to match up, and I love this matchup from a 49ers defensive perspective. I think they'll get turnovers in this game, and I don't think that the Ravens defense, while it's good, I don't think it's great. This is not the Ravens of 2000. I mean, they're they're a solid defense, but you know the Rams should have beat them. Uh, the Browns went in there and beat them. So this is on the road now. It's in uh, you know obviously uh, out there in uh, Frisco, and I just think that the 49ers like you. Uh, are clearly the best team in the NFL and the most balanced team. So uh, I'm I'm there with you, man. I just I don't trust Lamar in a game like this against a team that is just playing so great offensively. Here's the other thing too is is look, the front it speaks for itself, but I remember when we talked about San Francisco and Philadelphia and 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 you and I had this conversation about the linebacker level and how guys like Greenlaw and Werner and the lateral quickness, the sideline to sideline, yeah. how it, 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 I hate saying it negates a mobile quarterback, but it's as close as you can get to erasing it. And in this game, yeah, there's no free rides. And those guys, they find a way. Lamar does a great job not getting hit. These guys find a way to hit you. They find a way. They just bang, they're on you. I think it's a huge advantage. And then when you look at how the Niners are going to play, the physicality, that run scheme, I'm with you. Ravens are a good defense, but I don't think they're great. And if you're not great, I don't know how over 60 minutes you hold up on what is just an all-out assault on your defense by Shanahan. Laterally, vertically, uh, it, it, the eye candy pre-snap. And look, we're not going to get into an argument with Purdy because I know this is your favorite player on earth. But yes, Shanahan's going to be able to set him up for success and just dial up that five or six throws he needs from him a game. I I hate saying it because I feel like I'm too enamored with this team, 
But Boomer, yeah, I, I, I'm going to take the Niners late to five. You know, I, it, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Mike, and uh, I, I just can't believe like over the last like three or four weeks we're arguing whether or not Brock Purdy is like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, people who have never played the position can't appreciate the complexities of the position, especially when it's being played the right way. And you know, it's shocking to me that you know somebody like Cam Newton would somehow try to insult certain quarterbacks and the way that they play when he should know better than anybody just how difficult it is to run an offense. And, you know, Brock Purdy's a great athlete. He, he makes off-platform plat- throws, and, you know, he doesn't run around like a, a, a crazy person out there on the field like sometimes Jalen Hurts does. I wish Jalen Hurts would play the position more like he yes. did last year and play it more like Brock Purdy does. Look, I'm guilty. I just don't want to be thrown in the bucket with Cam Newton. I'm just guilty that I think he has such a wonderful setup. He's clearly a nice player. He's a good player. But look... Boomer, hold on. You love Mahomes. Nobody loves Pat Mahomes. You know him off the field and obviously on the field. He's the best quarterback in football. I'm not saying it's a crime that Purdy's not Mahomes. All I'm saying is he's not Mahomes. I can't do this MVP stuff. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not saying that he's uh, Mahomes. I'm not saying that. But I will say this, and I said this on the NFL Today last week, and I'll say it again here this morning. Uh, what I believe is that they are a mirror image of the late 80s, early 90s 49ers. They had a great coach in Bill Walsh. They had a great tight end in Brent Jones. They had a great running back in Roger Craig. They had a great fullback in Tom Rathman. Of course, they had the greatest wide receiver of all time, Jerry Rice, right. and John Taylor to go along with him. And then they put this guy from Notre Dame behind center who was drafted in the third round, and his name was Joe Montana. Now, I'm not saying that Brock Purdy is Joe Montana, but I'm saying there are a lot of similarities here with the situation Joe Montana had as well as Brock Purdy. Now, Brock Purdy is going to have to go on for the next 14 years and go win three or four Super Bowls if he wants to be mentioned in that breath. But I'm just saying nobody ever called Joe Montana a game manager. They just called him the greatest of all time. And it's the same type of offense. It's the same type of rhythm. It's the same type of synchronicity. It's the same type of players. And you know what? The most important player on every football team is that quarterback, and he's the one that makes everything go. And if you ask the players that he plays with, whether it be George Kittle or Christian McCaffrey or Debo Samuel, they will tell you that he is the guy that puts the ball where it's supposed to be put and plays the position the way it's supposed to be played. So I love the kid. He is the odds-on favorite for me anyway to be the MVP. But I will say this. Lamar wins this game, Dak wins his game, or Tua puts up big numbers down there against Dallas. You know, those are the four people, maybe along with Christian McCaffrey and Tyree Kill, that are gonna go that are going to be in the MVP conversation. And look, in a way, it's a perfect segue to the giving of the gifts. That's my first gift to Boomer. I gave him an ability to just riff on his favorite play, (laughs) Brock Purdy. So Merry Christmas. All right, let's get to the final word, the giving of the gifts. Kickoff with Boomer and Valenti, presented nationally by Casamigos Tequila. Casamigos, brought to you by those who drink it. And Lowe's, Lowe's knows home improvement. The final word. All right, nice and easy. Send you into the holidays. Alternating gifts. It's it's the NFL. It's week 16. A lot has happened. We want to offer gifts. Some serious, some not. It's my first gift is a one-way ticket to space for Sean Stellato, uh, the agent of, of Tommy DeVito. Your party city outfit, all this nonsense, yeah. you're in arguments, your hardline in pizzerias. Hey, right here, right to space, pal. Boomer, your first gift. Uh, it's going to be to Zach Wilson. It's going to be New York-related uh, as well. I am going to buy him a plane ticket out of New York uh, and say good riddance, goodbye, and go try to get your your uh, your career restarted, hopefully in Minnesota. My gift is for Nick Chubb. And in the words of the immortal Forrest Gump, magic legs, <laughs> a new leg preferably put on correctly so Nick Chubb can come back and win comeback player of the year next year. Great player, good dude, horrific injury. I can't wait to see him healthy next year. I love the guy. Okay, Bryce Young, here's my gift to you. It's a gift certificate to Chili's. You got to put some weight on, kid. You got to grow up and you got to get into the weight room and you got to do exactly what one of your former teammates did, and that's Tua Tonga Bailoa. Build your lower half, become a man, become more mature, and put about 10 to 15 pounds of fat and weight on and become a real NFL player. Yeah, no, and you know what? You're right. 
It is from a physicality. Forget about the height. Physicality standpoint, he's so slight, Boomer. Yes. You, you 100% agree. All right. My next gift uh, is for Tyreek Hill. Uh, it's a vasectomy uh, or, or, or or prophylactics of some kind. I Come on. Come on. Three kids in four months while you're married? That's a tad much, Tyreek. Let's power it down. Your financial advisor's online, too. Oh, my God. Boomer. I'm not going to have much money left. I can tell you that. Buddy, keep dividing by half. You see where this is going. Remember, I remembered uh, Shannon Sharp told me that 1994 was a very interesting year for him. And that's what it reminds <laughs> me of. All right. Um, <laughs> You know, I know you have one for Bill Belichick. I have one for Bill Belichick. I'm going to send him to L.A., and I'm going to let him become the head coach of Justin Herbert, which is also, in turn, a Christmas gift for Justin Herbert because I'm hoping that he would bring Josh McDaniels with him and turn Justin Herbert into a Super Bowl-winning quarterback. Yeah, and again, both gifts can work. See, this is great. It's multiple gifts for Bill. Mine was, you know what, and maybe I'm wired different, Boomer, He's done it all. He's said it all. It's a yacht. Go enjoy your life, man. Just just enjoy something that doesn't have to do with a football field. And the sun. I don't know. A daiquiri. Something, man. Just go enjoy yourself. But Boomer's right. You'll coach. I know this. Oh, yes, he will. All right, so here's my next gift. My next gift is to Bears fans out there. Now, mm. I, I like the way that Justin Fields has been playing. I appreciate it. I know he's trying. He's busting his ass. And he looks great. And I think they're going to end up trading him. And my gift to you guys is Caleb Williams. And you can finally have that quarterback at the top of the draft that everybody in football thinks is a can't-miss player. So my gift to you is the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams. Where does where does Fields end up? How about Atlanta? Yeah, how about does Atlanta with a new coach down there, a little too? Bit? Yeah, how does about Atlanta? Is, yeah. Feels it's good. Exciting. Yeah. I don't mind that. Okay. My next gift, look, the holidays are often a time where we fill people's hearts with joy. I'd like to fill Kadarius Tony's head with what's missing. It's called a brain. <laughs> Kadarius, you're massively talented. Get it together. Figure it out because the only thing that holds Kadarius Tony back is the five inches between his ears. Let's put something in there other than like cheese kernels. <laughs> Now I know why you reacted the way you did when I said this was going to become the Kadarius Tony coming out party this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Carry I, on, Boomer, your next gift. Uh, all right, so my my next gift uh, would be to Patrick Mahomes. And that gift, although he doesn't really need any gifts, is as he gave all of his uh, offensive linemen, I think, golf carts this week. Um, my gift to you, Patrick, is a, a real wide receiver, somebody – that is a difference maker because you have done all the heavy lifting. I know that Travis Kelsey is a big part of what you do, but you need somebody like a Tyree Kill that can take some of the pressure off of you because you have stood tall in the face of everything this year. You had one snap moment, and I understand that because we're all emotional, but I wish I could give you a great top-end wide receiver for 2024. Any names bouncing around? I can't say Devontae Adams because it's in division. And it's too much would, money, too, I think. Yeah. Who, you, How about you got T. Higgins? I would love to see him with T. Higgins. I'll give you one. And I look, I, I view the salary cap as fake. I just feel like teams just create money in creative ways. What about DK Metcalf? He don't seem happy in Seattle, brother. No, he doesn't. Um, you know, I, I uh, well, DK, who. That's interesting. I like T. Higgins better, actually. Okay. No, that's fine. I was just – I'm thinking about availability. Um, my next – my last gift is this. This is for fans. It's for Boomer. It's for Planet Earth. Competent, full-time officials, more expedited reviews, and please simplify some of the rules, okay? That's my gift. We just want to watch the games, not – Dean Blandino with his loosened tie and telling us nothing. I just want to watch the games. You know, Dean Blandino, Gene Steratore, Jerry Austin, uh, these guys all have families. They all have jobs, and they try to do the best they possibly can to explain the madness that is happening in front of us. And I, too, uh, second that. I hope that we can somehow, some way, end the frustration of having to watch games and wait for flags to see whether or not those flags are going to determine games, especially in the fourth quarter or in overtime. So I'm right there with you, Mike. So I, I, I can only hope that 
in 2024 and through the playoffs, I might add, that we improve that part of it. All right, with that, Merry Christmas to you, Booms. Merry Christmas, Scones. I know Eddie Scazzeri, his Yule will rule. It's exciting, and we will talk to you next week. Another remote deal, then we're back live in January. It is kickoff with Boomer and Valenti. It's kickoff with Boomer and Valenti. 